Have you ever considered a video on the rampant misogyny in online exercise spaces, especially bodybuilding and powerlifting? Uh, it feels it feels like kind of obvious, right? I don't know. Online workout communities are misogynistic. It just feels like I'd be beating a dead horse. If anything, I'd talk about misogyny in the online left, but according to some people, I am the misogyny in the online left, so... No. I would argue with me over that. You should talk about misogyny in the online left. Can you please explain essentialization? Essentialization is when there's a characteristic and you say that that characteristic exists in a person or in a group because of how they are, rather than circumstantial reasons, like the environment they grew up in or whatever, you know? Essentialization is kind of a relative thing, you know? It, it, it's, it's it, really, what essentialization refers to is when you are being more essentialist than is warranted by the subject at hand. And in regards to misogyny in the online left, I mean, it's, it's obviously a huge issue. Folks, if any, if watching my channel has taught you guys anything, I hope it is that saying you're on the left does not make you any less likely to be a gigantic piece of shit. Because the number of lefties who I talk with nonstop who demonstrate all of the same fundamental negative biases that we see in like alt writers is it's just this constant fucking thing, man. Um, and and honest to God, for a lot of people, the them being like feminists or whatever is honest virtue signaling. It is that is a real thing that really happens. All you need to do to prove that, by the way, is look at Merrick. Okay, people on the online left hate Merrick for some fucking reason. Merrick is a, a a sex worker with big titties, which is a good thing to be. You know, as far as I'm concerned, the world is a better place when 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 that is a thing that is that exists. You know, um, but. For this reason, that's basically like the, the, the fielded criticism of Merrick is always pushed through that filter. People despise Merrick, and it's never just, you know, oh, because of this or that, this position. It's always sexism. Merrick deals with so much sexism, and it's from the online left, you know? Not entirely unexpected. I didn't expect better from the online left, but... Now, I understand that nobody believes me when I say this because you're all pieces of shit, but... When I do the ironic misogyny thing, there is a reason for that joke. And the reason for the joke, the reason I do that, the underlying current of thought that legitimizes it, in my mind, is it's funny because it's absurd. Same with a lot of satire. It's funny because it's absurd. Like when I go on little bits about how I hate gay people, interspersed with how I'm gay. Like, you know, like you've heard me do that, right? Like, I fucking hate gay people. They like dick, which I totally don't. You know, like, it's the, the obvious joke is that, you know, you just hate bottoms. No, I actually do hate bottoms, but, you know, um, you understand what I'm talking about, right? The, the point is that by interspersing silly bigotry with self defeating behavior, you know? Um, the, the point is that that's supposed to produce some kind of innate humor, right? Now, everyone, not everyone finds that funny, and that is fine. It is, by its nature, kind of edgy or whatever, you know. But a lot of people in my community take from that that the funny part of that joke is when you're misogynistic. But that, to me at least, is only funny when it's being delivered in the appropriate context, right? So an example of this would be, I find it funny when... Or, or I should say, if you were to take two men and have them both make a misogynistic joke, I would find it much funnier coming from Bo Burnham than I would from um, Steven Crowder, even if both of their deliveries were identically good, which they wouldn't be because Steven Crowder is like genetically unfunny and Bo Burnham is talented. Um, but apart from that, I would find it funnier from Bo Burnham because there's a kind of inherent absurdity in like a avowed progressive guy making those jokes versus a person who, you know, just wants to say it. You know what I mean? Another example would be, a lot of it does come down to charitability, but you inform the level of charitability through the context you intersperse in the commentary, you know? So, for example, I've gotten in hot water for this before, but I don't believe any language is inherently bigoted. Even slurs, I think, can be employed in an anti-bigoted way. The best example of this, at least the one that most people have seen, is probably Blazing Saddles, which is great. If you haven't watched Blazing Saddles, you should. It is full of the N-word, and it is 
so obviously anti-racist that it's impossible to misinterpret. You know, it's really clearly, obviously an anti-racist movie. Um, Django Unchained too. Uh, uh, Django Unchained, I enjoy Django Unchained, but I think that by far, um, Blazing Saddles is a much, much, much better movie, in my opinion. Didn't people misinterpret it on Twitter a few years ago? Let's leave aside, listen, people on Twitter complain about shit they've never seen. If you watch Blazing Saddles, it is extremely obvious what political position the movie takes. What about Mel Brooks dressing up, uh, Mel Brooks dressing up as a Native American in Blazing Saddles? I mean, he dressed up as a Native American while letting the, the black people go, but he was talking in a stereotypical Jewish, like, New York Jewish accent, and, like, using Jewish terminology. So I think the joke... Yeah, he was speaking Yiddish. So I think the, the joke there was kind of a, a play on reciprocal oppression and also just the fundamental absurdity of a director with a feather headdress speaking Yiddish. I, I, I don't think it's as simple as just like Red Face or whatever. It's, it's a good movie. You, sh you should watch the movie. Look, I, look, 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 look. Okay. Oh, the only point that I'm getting at here is that I think... Oh, right. Sexist jokes. Ironic misogyny. The only point that I'm getting at here is that I think that virtually any language can be justified by the context in which it is delivered. Um, I do sincerely believe that. But it's possible to abuse that mantra and simply use it as a way of being bigoted and not facing any consequences for it. So, for example, they say the N-word plenty of times in Blazing Saddles, but, like, I can tell you for a fact there are probably people who just, like, repeat jokes from that film not because they like the jokes, but because they just want to say the N-word and to be able to go, oh, it's from Blazing Saddles, an anti-racist movie, you know? That shit happens all the time. All the, all the, all the, all the time. Um, not that specific example, but that general type of behavior. So it's, it's always difficult to say. He did that to make fun of how often Jews were cast as natives in old westerns. That's not even a tendency that I'm familiar with. Have you seen the statement by Nicholas Black where they say because bodies aren't inherently sexual, kids can dress however they want, including naked? No, I haven't seen that. And I disagree with that statement. So, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna guess that they've faced criticism for that statement, and I hope they learn from it. But this isn't an ideal world. Yeah, the, uh, uh, the, the problem is a lot of people kind of want to jump the gun on this, which can come across as kind of sussy-wussy, right? So here are two positions that I hold that I hope everyone watching right now also holds because I feel like it's pretty inarguable, right? Okay. In an ideal, perfect, ideal future universe brain galaxy world, okay, breasts wouldn't be sexualized inherently. And, you know, there would be the same rules between AFAB and AMAB people with regards to toplessness. That seems fair. And there are other cultures for which that is the case. Like right now. So that seems reasonable. Here's another equally objectively true position. I really genuinely don't want to deal with the discourse, or even anything at all, surrounding underage women deciding to go around topless. I don't. And you know, I don't think they do either. I don't think anyone wants to deal with that. I, I feel like that would actually be fucking horrible. <laughs> so... It, this is this is this is very much a cart before the horse situation. The total desexualization would have to come before any measure like that, at least for broad social application.